Okay, this is where you kind of bring up the the Elon Musk and the Sam Harris's, right? How far is your intuition about these kinds of self play mechanisms being able to take us? Because it feels mm. one of the ominous but stated calmly things that when I talked to David Silver, he said is that they have not yet discovered a ceiling for Alpha Zero, for example, on the game of Go or chess. Oh, interesting. Like, it's, it keeps, no matter how much the compute they throw at it, it keeps improving. Mm. So it's possible, it's very possible that you, th if you throw, you know, some like 10X compute that it will improve by 5X or something like that. And when stated calmly, it's so like, oh yeah, I guess so. But, <laughs> but like, and then you think like, well, are, can we potentially have like, uh, continuations of Moore's law in totally different way, like broadly defined Moore's law. Right, not the exponential improvement. E yeah. Exponential improvement, like, are we going to have an alpha zero that swallows the world? Uh, so th th but notice it's not getting better at other things. It's getting better at Go. Yeah. And I, I think it's a that's a big leap to say, okay, well, therefore it's better at other things. <laughs> well, I mean, the, the question is how much of the game of life can be turned into right. So in, that's a, that I think is a really good question, and I think that we don't. I don't think we as a I don't know community really know the the answer to this. But um, so okay. So so I went I went to a talk uh, by some experts on computer chess. So in particular, computer chess is really interesting because for you know for of course for a thousand years humans were the best chess playing things on the planet, um, and then computers like edge to head of the best person. And they've been ahead ever since. It's not like people have have overtaken computers. But um but computers and people together have overtaken computers. Right. So at least last time I checked, I don't know what the very latest is, but last time I checked that there were teams of people who could work with computer programs to defeat the best computer programs. In the game of Go? In the game of chess. In the game of chess. Right. And so using the information about how these things called ELO scores, this sort of notion of how strong a player are you? There's a, there's kind of a range of possible scores. And the, the, you, you increment in score, basically, if you can beat another player of that lower score 62% of the time or something like that. Like there's some threshold of if you can somewhat consistently beat someone, then you are of a higher score than that person. And there's a question as to how many times can you do that in chess? Right, and so we know that there's a range of human ability levels that cap out with the best playing humans, and the computers went a step beyond that, mm -hmm. and computers and people together have not gone, I think, a full step beyond that. It feels the estimates that they have is that it's starting to asymptote that mm -hmm. we've reached kind of the maximum, the best possible chess playing, and so that means that there's kind of a, a finite strategic depth. Right, at some point, you just can't get any better at this game. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't, uh, so I'll actually check that. Uh, I think it's interesting because if you have somebody like uh, Magnus Carlsen, mm -hmm. who's using these chess programs to train his mind, like to learn to about chess. To become a better chess player, yeah. And so like, that's a very interesting thing because we're not static creatures, we're learning together. I mean, just like we're talking about social networks, those algorithms are teaching us just like we're teaching those algorithms. So that's a fascinating thing. But I think the best chess playing programs are now better than the pairs. Like they have competition between okay. pairs, but the it's still, even if they weren't, it's an interesting question, where's the ceiling? So the, the David, the ominous David Silver kind of statement is like, we have not found the ceiling. Right, and, but the, so the question is, Okay, so I don't I don't know his analysis on that. My from talking to Go experts, the depth, the strategic depth of Go seems to be substantially greater than that of chess. Mm -hmm. That there's more kind of steps of improvement that you can make, get getting better and better and better and better. Yeah. But there's no reason to think that it's infinite. Infinite, yeah. Uh, and so it could be that it's that the what David is seeing is a kind of asymptoting that you can keep getting better, but with diminishing returns. And at some point you hit optimal play. Like in theory, all these finite games, they're finite. They have an optimal strategy. There's a strategy that is the minimax optimal strategy. And so at that point, you can't get any better. You can't beat that, that strategy. Now that strategy may be from an information processing perspective, intractable, right? The, the, you need 
the, 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 all the situations are sufficiently different that you can't compress it at all. It's this giant mess of hard-coded rules, and we can never achieve that. But but that still puts a cap on how many levels of improvement that we can actually make. But the 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 thing about self play is if you if you put it, although I don't like doing that, in the broader category of self supervised learning, is that it doesn't require too much or any human input. human labeling. Yeah, yeah, human label or just human effort. The human involvement past a certain point, and the same thing you could argue is true for the. The recent breakthroughs in natural language processing with mm. language models. Oh, this is how you get to GPT-3. Yeah, see how that did the... Uh... That, was a, that was a good good transition. Yeah, yeah, yeah you're I, a pro. I practiced that for days uh, leading up to this. No. Uh, but like, that's one of the questions is, can we find ways to formulate problems in this world that are important to us humans, like more important than the game of chess, Mm. that uh, to which self-supervised kinds of approaches could be applied, whether it's self-play, for example, for like maybe you could think of like autonomous vehicles in, in simulation, that kind of stuff, mm. or just robotics applications in simulation, or uh, in the self-supervised learning where un, unannotated data or data that's generated by humans naturally without extra cost, like the Wikipedia or like all of the internet can be used to, to learn something about, to create intelligent systems that do something uh, really powerful that pass the Turing test or that do mm -hmm. some kind of superhuman level performance. So what's your intuition, like trying to stitch all of it together about our discussion of AGI, the limits of self-play, and your thoughts about maybe the limits of neural networks in the context of language models. Is there some intuition in there that might be useful to think about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So so first of all, the, the whole transformer network family of things, um, is really cool. <laughs> it's yeah. really, really cool. I mean, for you know, if you've ever if back in the day you played with, I don't know, Markov models for generating text and you've seen the kind of text that they spit out and you compare it to what's happening now, it's it's amazing. It's so amazing. Now, it doesn't take very long interacting with one of these systems before you find the holes, right? It's It's not smart in any kind of general way. It's really good at a bunch of things. And it does seem to understand a lot of the statistics of language extremely well. And that turns out to be very powerful. You can answer many questions with that. But it doesn't make it a good conversationalist, right? And it doesn't make it a good storyteller. It just makes it good at imitating of things that it has seen in the past. The exact same thing could be said by people who voting for Donald Trump about Joe Biden supporters and people voting for Joe Biden about Donald Trump supporters is... Uh, you know, they, that they're not intelligent. They're, they're just they're, following the. Yeah, they're following things they've seen in the past, and uh, so it's I, very. It doesn't take long to find the flaws in their uh, <laughs> in in their like natural their, language generation uh, abilities. Yes, yes. So we're being very. That's interesting. Uh, <laughs> critical so, of AI systems. <laughs> right. So so I've had a similar thought, which was that the stories that GPT three spits out are amazing and very human like. And it doesn't mean that computers are smarter than we realize necessarily. It partly means that people are dumber than we realize <laughs> or that much of what we do day to day is not that deep. Like we're just, we're just kind of going with the flow. We're saying whatever feels like the natural thing to say next. Not a lot of it is, is, is creative or meaningful or, or intentional, but enough is that we actually get we get by, right? We we do come up with new ideas sometimes, and we do manage to talk each other into things sometimes, and we do sometimes vote for reasonable people sometimes. But um, but it's really hard to see in the statistics because so much of what we're saying is kind of rote, mm -hmm. um, and so our metrics that we use to measure how these systems are doing don't reveal that because it's 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 in the interstices that that is very hard to detect. But is your do you have an intuition that with these language models, if they grow in size, it's already surprising that when you go from GPT two to GPT three, that there is a noticeable improvement. Yeah. So the question now goes back to the ominous David Silver and the ceiling. Mm 
Right. So what maybe the there's ceiling? just no ceiling. We just need more compute. Now, I mean, okay, so now I'm speculating. Yes. Fine. As opposed to before when I was completely on firm ground. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, I don't believe that you can get something that really can do language and use language as a thing that doesn't interact with people. Like, I think that mm. it's not enough to just take everything that we've said written down and just say, that's enough. You can just learn from that and you can be intelligent. I think you really need to be pushed back at. I think that conversations, even people who are pretty smart, maybe the smartest thing that we know, not maybe not the smartest thing we can imagine, but we get so much benefit out of talking to each other and interacting. Um, that's presumably why you have conversations live with guests is that that there's something in that interaction that would not be exposed by, oh, I'll just write your story and then you can read it later. And I think, I think because these systems are just learning from our stories, they're not learning from being pushed back at by us, that they're fundamentally limited into what they could actually become on this route. They have to, they have to get, you know, shut down. Like we, like we, we have to have an argument that they have to have an argument with us and lose a couple times before they start to realize, oh, okay, wait, there's some nuance here that actually matters. Yeah, that's actually subtle sounding, but quite profound that the interaction with humans is, is essential. And the limitation within that is profound as well because the time scale, like the bandwidth at which you can really interact with humans is very low. Yeah. So it's costly, so you can't, one of the underlying things about self-plays, it has to do, you know, a very large number of interactions. And so you can't really deploy reinforcement learning systems into the real world to interact. Like you couldn't deploy a language model into the real world to interact with humans because it would just not get enough data relative to the cost it takes to interact, like the time of humans is is, is expensive, which is really interesting. That that go that takes us back to reinforcement learning and trying to figure out if there's ways to make uh, algorithms that are more efficient at learning, mm. keep the spirit in reinforcement learning, and become more efficient. 